I was, um, along came Betty, uh, one of the uh, most beautiful tunes by um, Betty Colson, and it was one of Art Blakey's signature tunes. And this is Aron Juan Ortiz. And uh, each of us is going to introduce something that we wrote and tell you some dirt. So I'm going to start with Aron Juan. I think we're going to play a number called Numbers. Hello. <laughs> yeah, this is not my, my strength, actually. Dublin is not my name. Um, yeah, but I'm, well, I will introduce this to him called Numbers. I mean, um, I'm very fan of uh, like the Bowles and the kind of thing, like Tom um, and uh, so many other great composers. And I like, you know, the Gaffinism and, and Sarah's, you know, Sarah's and you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and I was, uh, uh, when I wrote this tune, I was based on kind of half a, how you can make, a, I would say, a beautiful tune, that's what I think. Uh, without repeat any note, so you go a series of, of, of you know, series of notes without repeating any of them, and still kind of make it like a, a laugh sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, but uh, so um, this is what it is. So now I let you guys to see if you like it or not. <laughs> you think it's a laugh sound? So this is numbers.
endless by our own artiste. Um, anybody that knows a little about me knows that every once in a while I really get passionate and super nerdy about something. And right now, my super nerdy thing is one of the great American composers, Latin American composers, this guy named Pijinguinha. If you know anything about Brazilian music, before there was samba, there was an idiom called choro. And choro still kind of exists, there's lots of stringed instruments. And it was kind of simple, kind of folky kind of stuff. But then this guy came along, and you know, like when you hear somebody's music, you go to, oh man, this guy studied. There's counterpoint here. There's voice leading. There's really fancy chords, really beautiful. And you know, most people think Brazilian music, it's all happy. But it, it's a really interesting idiom, because it really combines this European influence with this almost state-sponsored desire to create an identity through music. And that's how we got delivered things like Carmen Miranda. That was all a, a, a dictator, basically, decreed that samba would be the national music. And the same dictator guy wanted to, he, he looked up to Hitler and Mussolini, yet he picked an African music and he made that Brazilian music. Very interesting. Anyway, getting back to the composer. Pijinguinha came from a family of choro musicians, and he was a great flutist. It's hard to tell why he stopped playing flute, but then he took up tenor sax, and then he had another guy playing the flute, and the thing, but the, it's the things he wrote. I'll just play something, and you'll see what I mean. It's the things he wrote. He was a bad cat. He's my big hero now.
to this music. I mean, you gotta check this out. P I N, no, P I X I N G U I N H A. This is this guy's name. He had a longer name, so it, as bad as that is, it's better than four or five names. But um, he has an amazing output, and I think I would like it if you looked him up. <laughs> um, we're gonna play a number of mine that I wrote very recently. Last summer, I had the opportunity to score something for American Masters. There was a documentary on the poet and playwright Lorraine Hansberry. I don't know if you know who she was, but she wrote the first great African-American play, A Raisin in the Sun, yeah. with Ruby Dee and Sidney Poitier. So I got to write some music about that. And the particular scene, I need some clarinet for this, this dryness is killing me. Um, <laughs> The particular scene that this is written for and about really is her wedding. And she was like an early, she was gay before you could say that you were gay, she was gay. But then she marries this guy who really kind of takes care of her. They have a very loving relationship, but she's reading Simone de Beauvoir, and she moves out and does all of these things that you would expect somebody to do 20 or 30 years later. And then she just died very suddenly. But this is her wedding music, and it's called Delphian Nuptials. Nuptials. It has an I in it, not a U. Let me have it up front. Thank 
Because I'm going to play this clarinet. What the hell? I'm play it anyway. Maybe it'll decide to play for me. Um, here's another tune that I wrote. Um, Y'all remember Little Abner? See, that, that means you old. Because I'm old. That's the only way you remember that. Little Abner, for all you young zygotes, Little Abner was a cartoon strip back when you would buy the Sunday Funnies and there would be, you know, you'd have cartoons. And it was like a hillbilly kind of thing, like the Beverly Hillbillies. What are the Beverly Hillbillies? I'm not going to go into that now. However, this was a hillbilly of a different color because the guy, Al Cap, that drew the cartoon was kind of a leftist. I don't know how he got away with it. I mean, he criticized Eisenhower while he was in office and managed to do it through these kind of weird hillbilly things. He was kind of like a little before Charlie Brown. He was a big thing. But he had one character that had a cloud over his head. And his name was Joe Potovsplik. That's the way I pronounced it. In, my, in, in our West Indian household, that's the way we pronounced the word. You know, in Colorado, I don't know how you pronounce it, but there were no vowels in it. It was a P T F S P L K. That was the word. And you see this every Sunday, you know. In retrospect, the guy must have been smoking pot because, you know, he had, he had a, the, the name of the character you couldn't pronounce. Anyway, this is, this is called Joe Batusplik. Play up
We're going to play some John Coltrane now. Um, I haven't really decided which Coltrane. You know, Coltrane is known for writing the most difficult tunes. And some years ago, I decided, I said, I hate going to jam sessions and hearing people barely making the requirements of Giant Steps played really fast. So I decided to play all these things really slow. So we'll play a slow version of 262.
So I will let the music speak by itself. So I don't want to cry anymore.
We're gonna play one more, R-O-R-F-T's. So I love um, a Catalan composer. I used to live in Spain. So there a Catalan composer when I was studying there. My, the, his name was Federico Mompó. Um, that uh, he used for the beginning of 20th century. And, um, and uh, he was influenced by all the French school, and <laughs> all the Russian, you know, all the, <laughs> like a neoclassical. And, but he was like, he has something very unique, very, Distinctive that uh, for me kind of resonate in you know, all his harmonic universe was for me was amazing, and uh, I was you know studying you know studying the conservatory etc. And now that uh, I kind of play this kind of music like bringing classical music and you know classical music influence, and I was I thought that uh, there was a great tune to play dual you know with the clarinet with you know, such a Another man like Don Byron that also know the, you know the classical world very well and explore and then kind of have these influences were all over the place and um, so we recorded this this uh, piece was uh, the tune and the tune number five was included in the, on the on the book like called Musica Callada uh, no no I don't know Musica Callada I mean. Uh, uh, I'm Cuban, so I speak Spanish. Sometimes I, it's hard to translate when I know something in one language. Uh, especially something like that, you know? And uh, uh, maybe like a silent music, let's put it that way. And um, it's beautiful. Yeah, so let me just let you know. It's amazing. <laughs>
Thank you.